All right, one more video from 6.1, which ended up being a pretty intense section. So if you're kind of keeping your head above water, be really proud of yourself. And if you're struggling a little bit, know that you're not alone. What I want to get out of this video is similar to what we did in the previous video, except I want to work backwards. In the previous video, you would be given the equation of some transform trig function, and you'd come up with the graph. Your final answer would look like what's pictured in green here. What I want to do in this video is work backwards. In this video, I want to start you out with the graph and ask you to give me the equation. And what you'll see is that's tricky for a few reasons, but it won't be brand new. We can use a lot of the ideas that we learned in the previous videos to solve that problem. But the point that I want to make before I get too far is that it's kind of an unfair question to just be like, here's a graph and tell me what the equation is. And the reason why is the fact that these repeat infinitely many times, these trig graphs and the sine graph and the cosine graph are so similar. One's just kind of a shifted over version of the other one makes it so lots of different equations have the exact same graph. So that leaves me, the teacher, in kind of a weird spot. I can either be like, just give me an equation that has this graph and there's infinitely many possibilities, or I can try to specify things so that we'll all get the same answer. I don't want your answer to be correct but not match my answer. I feel like that could cause some confusion. So what I'm gonna do when I test you on these is ask the question like this. I'll ask you to determine the amplitude, the midline, and the period of the graph, and I'll tell you the phase shift. So in this case, maybe I'm telling you the phase shift is negative three pi. I'll specify what I want you to use as the starting point. And as long as I specify the phase shift, then our answers will be the exact same when I ask you to write the equation. So how do you do all this? Well, we're gonna take a lot of the ideas from the previous video and just apply them here. And two of the ideas that I've talked about, but I don't think I've explicitly written, are these two facts. In red, what I'm saying here is the transformed graph of sine. If we're gonna use the sine function to model things, we always need to start on the midline. And start is in quotation marks because these graphs never really start or end. They continue infinitely in both directions. But using the word start to correspond with the x coordinate of the phase shift, using this as kind of my starting point, if that's what we understand start to mean, then these graphs always start at the midline. And if our orientation is normal, they start out by going up. And if our orientation is opposite, if we have the negative orientation, then they start out by going down. And that's all true for the sine graphs, but the cosine graphs are really different. Transformed versions of the cosine graph don't start out at the midline. They always either start out at the top or at the bottom, the max or at the minimum. They start out at the max normally. However, if you flip the orientation, if you have the negative orientation, then it's going to start at the minimum. And I think I've talked about these two facts, but I was hesitant to write them down because this idea of the graphs starting being such a weird concept. But even though a mathematician not, might not really like me writing this, I think from the student's point of view, it makes a lot of sense. So hopefully you understand what I mean when I give these two statements. What we wanna get out of these statements is, if we're using negative three pi as our phase shift, we're thinking about this point as the starting point. And because this point is at a maximum spot on this graph, it's not in the middle, it's not at the bottom, it's up at the top we know that our equation for this graph is going to be in terms of cosine. And since we're starting at the top, we know it'll be the normal orientation. And that will be key to figuring out the equation, which is what we're eventually going to do for this problem. But before we get to the equation, let's tackle the problems in order. It asks us to determine the amplitude, the midline, and the period of this graph. What I think helps if you're trying to figure those out are put in the guidelines that we use to draw these graphs in the first place. The highest this graph ever gets is a height of two here. The lowest this graph ever gets is a height of negative four. It's a little bit hard to see the midline maybe by looking at this, but the midline has to be halfway between negative four and positive two. And there's a distance of six from negative four to positive two, so half of that six gives me three. What that means is the midline has to be a distance of three from the top or the bottom. So from negative four, I can count up by three and get to negative one here. Or from positive two, I can count down by three. Either way, I get to negative one is the midline of this graph which is a lot easier to see after you kind of draw it with the rest of the graph. Because my phase shift is negative three pi, I'm gonna think about this vertical line at negative three pi, which you don't even have to draw if you don't want, as kind of my starting spot for one full revolution of this graph. And one full revolution of this graph, it looks like that happens by the time I get over to here. So positive pi out here will be my ending spot for one full revolution of this graph. This little blue box right here will help me in figuring out the amplitude, the midline, and the period. I think it's easiest to get the midline first. The midline, it just looks like that has a height of negative one. Or if you wanna be really particular, the equation of the midline is y equals negative one. But I can tell you, you get full credit if you just write negative one. This is where our midline is. From our midline, the highest the graph ever gets is two, which is three units above this midline at negative one. Similarly, the lowest it ever gets is negative four, which is three units below negative one. What I'm saying is that the amplitude of this graph is just three. 
The period is how long it takes for this graph to repeat itself. How long in the x direction do I need to do one full revolution? Well, let's see, one full revolution happens from here to here. It happens from negative three to pi. The distance from negative three to pi is four pi. So my period is just four pi. Amplitude, midline, period, and then phase shift was given to me. I have all four of the new vocabulary words about this graph. And using those, I can come up with the equation of the graph. What I think helps is to recognize that because we're starting at a maximum, we know that we're gonna be using cosine to model this graph. So my final answer will be y equals a times the cosine of bx plus c plus d for some numbers a, b, c, and d. The easiest of those to figure out, I think, is d. The midline having an equation of y equals negative one immediately tells me that d is equal to negative one. I think the next easiest to figure out is a. Because my amplitude is three and the amplitude is the absolute value of a, I know that the absolute value of a is equal to three. Oh, but that's kind of tricky. A could be positive three or negative three. Which one is it? Well, because I'm starting out at the top here, I know I have the normal orientation. I don't have the negative orientation. So what that means is A is gonna be the positive value, not the negative value. So because I have my normal orientation, A is just equal to three. From the period, I can figure out B because the period is always equal to two pi divided by B. So I have two pi divided by B is equal to four pi. And if you're really paying attention, you might be like, wait, weren't there absolute value signs around this B? And the answer is yes, there is, but I told you that we're always gonna make B positive in this class, so you don't have to worry about that. To solve this equation for B, maybe I'd multiply the B up to this side and divide both sides by four pi, and I'd get two pi over four pi is equal to B. And so reducing this fraction, I get that B is just equal to one half. I know A, B, and D, the only thing that's missing is C. I can get C from the phase shift. The phase shift is negative three pi, but I know that the phase shift is always negative C divided by B. So I have negative C divided by B is equal to negative three pi. Remember a minute ago, we figured out B was one half. So I could write negative C divided by one half is equal to negative three pi. And negative C divided by one half, if you view this as negative C over one, and divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal, what you'll get is negative two C is equal to negative three pi. And now I can solve for C by dividing both sides by negative two, and I get C equals three pi over two. I have values for A, B, C, and D, so I have my final answer. Y equals A, which is three, times the cosine of B, which is one half, times X plus C, which is three pi over two, plus D, which we figured out was negative one. That's pretty intense. We probably need some more practice with that. Let's do another example. So for our next example, I actually took the exact same graph here, but suppose I told you that the phase shift was zero. Suppose I was telling you to use this as your starting point instead of using this as your starting point. If you're really observant, you might actually see this graph up here. It's just this portion of the graph that I'm looking at, but it's the exact same graph. However, we'll have a different equation for it. And the reason we'll have a different equation is because you're to assume that I'm telling you that the phase shift is zero. I'm telling you to use this as your starting point. Well, if you're given that information, how would you come up with the equation? I probably start the same way. I say the graph gets as low as negative four here, and it gets as high as positive two up here. And halfway in between that negative four and this positive two is my midline, which is still at negative one. And if I'm starting here at an X coordinate of zero to do one full revolution, I don't finish a full revolution until I get all the way over here to four pi. So I can kind of think about this as the start and the end in the X direction, even though this graph continues infinitely far in both directions. So what does this tell me? Well, the midline is still at Y equals negative one. So my value of D is still gonna be equal to negative one. The amplitude, is equal to three because the distance from the midline to the maximum or to the minimum is equal to three. So that tells me that the absolute value of A is equal to three. So A is either positive three or negative three. I still gotta figure that out. The period is still four pi because it still takes a distance of four pi to do one full revolution. I'm just going from zero to four pi instead of going from negative three pi to one pi. But either way, it's a distance of four pi. So that tells me that two pi over the absolute value of B, but you can leave off the absolute value, is equal to four pi. So if I solve this equation for B, like we did before, we get B is equal to one half. The same logic is up here. And then finally, the phase shift. Well, since we're assuming that this is our starting point, the X coordinate is zero here. That tells me that my phase shift is zero. And the phase shift is always negative C over B. B is one half. So C must be equal to zero if I'm gonna take a number and divide it by one half and get zero as my answer. If negative C over B equals zero, then C is just equal to zero. 
So I almost have my values for A, B, C, and D. The only ambiguity is I don't know whether A should be positive or negative. Well, let's look at our graph here. We're starting at this point. Note we're starting in the middle here and we're heading up from the start. Transform graphs of sine are always the ones that start in the middle and their normal orientation is when they go up. It's only the negative orientation when they start out by going in the down direction. So I'm gonna use sine instead of cosine and the fact that I have normal orientation tells me that my value of A will be positive, not negative three. I got A, B, C, and D and I know that I have to use the sine function again because I'm starting out on the midline. So I have my final answer. Y equals A times the sine of B, X plus C, plus D. This would be a perfectly acceptable answer, although most people don't write plus zero. So you could also express your answer this way. It's worth pointing out that this is a very different looking equation as I came up with for my answer up here. But if you go to Desmos like I did and you type in this equation, or if you type in this equation, what you'll see is it's the exact same graph. And those aren't the only two equations that produce that exact same graph. Here's one more version of that exact same graph. The only difference is now you're going to assume that I'm telling you to use this as your starting spot, that your phase shift is negative pi. What would you do? Well, let's see, maybe I can draw my box. Here's where I'm starting at negative pi. The lowest the graph ever gets is negative four. The highest the graph ever gets is positive two. And to do one full revolution, it looks like that happens when I get over here to three pi. So I'll end my box here. If the lowest the graph gets is negative four and the highest it gets is negative two, halfway in between those two values is negative one. It looks like I have the exact same midline, the exact same amplitude, and the exact same period as I've seen in each of the previous two examples. My midline is y equals negative one, so that tells me that d is equal to negative one. My amplitude is again gonna be three, the distance from the midline to the max or the minimum here. And so that tells me that the absolute value of A is equal to three. So at this point, I don't know whether A should be positive three or negative three, more on that in just a second. And the period appears to be four pi. It takes four pi in order for this thing to repeat. But I know that the period is always equal to two pi over the absolute value of B, and B is always gonna be positive in our class. So we solve this equation and we get that B is equal to one half, as we did when we solved that equation way up here. All that's left now is to figure out the phase shift. Well, the phase shift is negative pi because we're using that as our starting point, And we know that the phase shift is always negative C divided by B. B is one half. So I can say negative C divided by one half is equal to negative pi and solve this equation to figure out what C is equal to. One way you can solve this equation is think about this as negative C over one, fractions over fractions, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. And you get negative two C is equal to negative pi and then divide both sides of the equation by negative two, and you get C is pi over two. We almost have A, B, C, and D. The only thing that we're missing is we don't know whether A is positive or negative, and in order to write our equation, we have to know whether we're using sine or cosine to model this function. Well, let's see, our starting point here, it looks like our graph starts at a minimum value. Unlike the sine graph, which always starts on the midline, the cosine graph starts at the maximum or the minimum. It starts at the minimum anytime I have my negative orientation. So I get two pieces of information there. I'm gonna be using the cosine to model this graph, and because the orientation is backwards, my value of A is gonna be negative three. I know that I'm using cosine and I know A, B, C, and D. Now it's just a matter of writing my answer. Y equals A, which is negative three, times the cosine of B, X plus C. B is one half x plus c would be plus pi over two and then i want to add on d plus negative one i could write as minus one here is a third different equation that comes up with this exact same graph that we've seen in green in case that's not enough i got two more examples this might be overkill but i know this stuff's hard and i thought repetition might be good Here's another graph. Assume that I told you to use negative pi as your phase shift. It looks like it completes one full revolution by the time I get over here to positive pi. That sure sounds like my period is gonna be two pi, the difference, the distance between the two. The lowest the graph ever gets, that looks like negative three. The highest the graph ever gets, that looks like positive one. Halfway in between negative three and positive one would be my midline. Looks like that's gonna be at negative one again. Just from the vertical components of this little box, I know that my midline is at negative one and my amplitude is at two. So I know that D is equal to negative one and the absolute value of A is equal to positive two. From the horizontal components of this graph, I can get the period and the phase shift from negative pi to positive pi is a distance of two pi. So my period is two pi. And because the period is always two pi divided by B, I can solve and get that B is equal to one. Really, you could put absolute value signs here, but again, we're always gonna have positive values of B in our class. So you don't have to worry about that. 
finally the phase shift well because i'm using this as my starting point my phase shift is negative pi and i know that negative c over b is always equal to the phase shift so negative c over b has got to be equal to negative pi but b was just equal to one so that's telling me that negative c equals negative pi in other words c is just equal to pi I almost have A, B, C, and D. I just have to figure out if A is positive two or negative two. Well, let's see, it looks like I'm starting out at the top of this graph. That tells me both that I'm gonna use cosine to model this and that I have the normal orientation. So A is the positive number. So now I have A, B, C, and D and I can write my answer. Y equals A two times cosine, again, because we're starting out up at the top here, of B, X plus C, so one X or just X if you want, plus pi plus D, which is this minus one. There's another graph with another equation. One last one. This graph is a mess. This graph is really ugly. This is gonna be hard to deal with. And I didn't even specify the phase shift for you. So there's multiple correct answers for this one. If I were trying to come up with the equation for this, what I would do is I would use this point as my starting point. To be clear, you don't have to use this point as your starting point, but if you chose to use this point as your starting point, then your phase shift is zero. And when your phase shift is zero, it's really easy to solve for C and it makes things work out really nicely. So I'm gonna to choose to make this my starting point, although to be clear, you could have chosen something else as your starting point. What's one full revolution from here? Well, let's see, it looks like one full revolution happens by the time I get to this point. It looks like I do one full revolution in between zero and pi. It sounds like my period is equal to pi. The lowest this graph ever gets is at negative one here, and the highest this graph ever gets is at positive five here. Halfway in between negative one and positive five is here at positive two. That little box was really hard to see, so I went over it in green, and maybe now it's even worse, I'm not sure, but I think I have enough information to figure out everything I need. Low hanging fruit, midline. Midline is at y equals two, so that immediately tells me that my value of d is two. Amplitude, well, the distance from two to the top of the graph at five is three, so my amplitude is equal to three, and therefore the absolute value of a would be equal to three. Right now, I don't know whether it's positive three or negative three. Period? Well, just by looking at my graph, it looks like it does one full revolution in between zero and pi. So the period of this is pi. And I know that two pi over b is always equal to the period, pi in this case. So if I solve this equation for b, I get that b is equal to two. Finally, the phase shift. Well, I did myself a favor by choosing to start my graph right here. I'm choosing to make the phase shift zero. If the phase shift is zero, then negative C over B equals zero. So C must just be equal to zero. I almost have A, B, C, and D. I just need to figure out whether A is positive three or negative three. And then if I know whether I should use sine or cosine to model this, I can be done. Well, let's look at our starting point. It looks like we start out on the midline and we start out by going down. You're probably sick of me referring to this, but remember that it's the sine graph that always starts on the midline and the nor normal orientation starts by going up. It's the negative orientation that starts going down. So we're gonna be using sine and the negative orientation. Negative orientation tells me that A equals negative three. And since I know I'm using sine, I can write my equation as Y equals negative three, my value of A times the sine of BX plus C. So two X plus zero or just two X plus D, which is equal to two. Here's one of the many equations that would result in this graph that you see in red. And maybe finally I can call this video in this section good.